to prophesy means to make divinely inspired utterances. Unlike other people who talk the problem, you don't talk the problem, you talk the solution. You say divinely inspired things. I know the people around you may think you are crazy, but eventually they will realize you were right. Did I hear you say amen to that? He said, your young men shall see visions. You see that? People see problems, you see the solution. They see Satan, you see God. They see demons, you see angels. They see scarcity, you see abundance. Because you are what? Under the influence. When somebody is drunk, when the person sees an electric pole, he thinks he's a human being. The, the, human being turns into, the electric pole turns into a human being. That's it. When you are under the influence, the Holy Spirit helps you to see things your ordinary eyes cannot see. Ours is positive. Listen to me. Why do people take alcohol and drugs? You think it's only poor people, wretched people, jobless people that are on drugs? There are loads of artists, loads of entertainers, millionaires. There are loads of executives who are on drugs. Why? They confront issues. They solve heavy problems. And sometimes they get overwhelmed. And sometimes they have deadlines to meet. They must be creative. They've got to be innovative. And the truth also is that sometimes when you are taking those things, you get great, you get ideas that are out of this world. But excuse me, you end up a junkie. He says here, don't, don't. <laughs> I love this. He says, drink the spirit of God. You want to sniff something? Sniff the Holy Ghost. You want to inject something into your blood? Inject the Holy Spirit. You see, the difference is going to show. He says, you go around singing. You'll be singing psalms, singing hymns, making melody. In your heart, you make music. Don't drunk people sing. Hallelujah. See, <laughs> some people don't understand what happens. They say we're crazy, they say we're religious fanatics, but the truth is you, you will be influenced by something. We have chosen to be influenced by the Spirit of God. You see Joseph in the Bible, Genesis 41 verse 38. Pharaoh looked at him. He said, can we find a man like this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh knew that the solution that Joseph proffered couldn't have come from the human mind. He said, this guy must be filled with the Spirit of God. But his own craziness is positive. Amen. Because he uses his craziness to get solutions to problems. Not to smash bottles and smash the TV and other electronics in the house. We are filled with something. Remember again, it's not just something. It's someone. Hallelujah. When you are animated and motivated by the Spirit, one, he bats the Spirit of God in you. He bats the nature of God in you. He bats the nature of God in you. Remember John 3 verse 6? Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Without the nature of God, you cannot think like God. You never have the capacity. The challenge here today is that you choose not to live a mediocre life. Without being influenced by the Spirit of God, you cannot realize your potentials. So he bats the nature of God in us and grows that nature. He helps us to develop the character of God. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience, long-suffering, kindness. Those are the things that the Spirit of God will you know, produce in you when he animates you. When somebody curses you and you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, what would the Holy Spirit nudge you to say? Curse the person back? No, that's from the nature of Satan. When you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, somebody curses you, you say, God bless you, with a smile. Yeah, you've got to be crazy, but that's positive craziness. That's the way to go. When you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, he creates in you the capacity to love, because God is love. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Your capacity for malice begins to reduce. Some people have anointing to keep grudges. It's an anointing. They can refuse to talk to someone for five years. They even brag about it. I don't know who he, think he thinks he is. I didn't talk to him for five years. He thinks it's a joke. 
Congratulations. If they gave a gold medal for keeping grudges, you would get a gold medal. I promise you. You're trying. Really nice. Just that that is the, the nature of Satan. It's not God's nature. Anointing for grudges. You get capacity to love. You get capacity to forgive people who are hurting you. When you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, because he helps you to see it better. You don't respond to situations the way other people respond. While it looks like everything is going to crash, you know what you are seeing? You are hearing in your spirit, for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. You see, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you the things to come. So when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you've seen where the thing will end. It's going to end well. So why should you then allow yourself to go crazy being worried at the moment? There's no point. In fact, and that future that you see is so real to you that you build your life on it now. That's what we call faith. Amen? And you now have the capacity to even borrow from the joy that you will experience at the end of the day and bring it into the presence and you get excited all by yourself. The Holy Spirit also gives us the capacity to solve problems. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power, dunamis, dynamite power, explosive power, raw spiritual energy working in your life. He said when the Holy Spirit comes on you. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. We have what you call the gifts of the Spirit. Capacity to work miracles. Capacity to heal the sick. Access to wisdom, ideas from God. You have the gift of wisdom, you have the gift of knowledge. You have the gift of prophecy. You can make divinely inspired declarations and the things you say will come to pass. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what it means to walk in the Spirit. So you spend time with Him in prayer. You spend time with Him in meditation, in the Word. And then you find out every single time you find yourself in the situation, you're asking, Holy Spirit, what should I say? Holy Spirit, what should I do? When you do what the Holy Spirit asks you to do, it may not make sense to people, but ultimately, you see His power working in your life. That's the best way to live your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever force it is, whatever spirit that has been influencing your emotions, contrary to the Spirit of God, Whatever spirit has been influencing your thinking, contrary to the spirit of God, I declare today, they are flushed out. Yeah. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make yours a world of possibilities. Come to Daystar Christian Center this Sunday at Plot A3C, Ikosi Road, Oregon, Lagos, Nigeria. Join any of our four services at 7 a.m., 8.45 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 12.15 p.m. And experience possibilities without limits. Daystar. Daystar. Raising role models.